A lot of people are wondering how you can paint with oil paints and not use solvents or other toxic mediums. And I had this problem as well many years ago when I started oil painting and I had two small children at home. My studio was just at home in the living room at the time and I did not want any toxic materials around. And I realised later when I did start using solvents and turps that I had quite a strong, almost allergic reaction to it. So I immediately went back to working without solvents. So I started working without solvents. When I started using oil paints, I moved over from pastel and wanted to use oil paints because it's a little bit less messy. Now, painting without solvents is something that is quite easy to do, but it does require a few adjustments. And if you have been painting in oils for a long time, you might need to change some of your habits and some of your ways. So I wrote a blog post about this and I just want to go through it with you together. So oil painting without using solvents or toxic mediums, can it be done? Absolutely, it can be done. This guide, this blog post explains how oil painting can be enjoyed without the need for solvents or heavy metal pigments. It will explore how to keep your studio safe for children, which in my case was very relevant. Pets, I've got a dog and I had a dog at the time, but also your own health. Just the other day, someone told me she would like to use oil paints, but chose not to because of the toxic solvents she thought had to be involved. Of course, it is sensible to stay away from hazardous materials, but there is no need to stay away from oil painting at all. So why do I paint solvent free? Well, as I already explained, I started using oil paints shortly after my children were born. Indeed, instead of moving away from oil paint when small children came into the world, I actually moved to it. And I moved to oil paint in a safe way, using no solvents or toxic mediums whatsoever. As my children grew older, I started experimenting with medians and solvents, but I quickly found I reacted strongly to them. Solvents made me feel quite ill, and after trying out a variety of mediums, I returned to oil painting without solvents. Do note that, of course, you can paint with solvents in a safe and perfectly sensible way. You just have to use common sense. So this blog post is not to say you shouldn't use solvents. This article is to, is to explain how you can paint without using solvents if you wish to, if you want to. So this blog post is aimed at those who are reluctant to work in oils because of the toxicity issue. And it hopefully will show you that it is possible to enjoy oil painting without solvents or hazardous materials at all. Depending on the reason you want to remove toxins from your studio, there are a few things to implement quite easily, but other things will require some more commitment. Now, how to child and pet proof your studio, which for me was very relevant at the time. Now, I still have a silly dog, but my children are now teenagers and so hopefully a little bit more sensible, but I still work mainly toxic free. You might not want to stop using hazardous materials, but you are concerned about your child or other family members or a pet's health. The first step in child and pet proofing your studio would be to not have anything toxic lying around. Make sure everything has a place and can be put away. In cupboards and drawers. Don't have anything lying around that would invite little hands or dogs mouths to explore. When there's nothing to pick up, nothing will be picked up. If you just bought yourself an expensive sable brush, you might not want your toddler having a little testing round or Fido using it as a dog's bone. And you don't even want to think about them picking up something hazardous. Make sure any toxic materials is, are put away 
out of sight in a place where no pets and no children can ever reach it. To save myself that hassle, I just stuck to banning it all completely. An oil painting without toxic material is much easier to create than you think. Now, if you want to ban all hazardous materials, you need to ban all toxic paints. That means no cadmiums, no cobalt, no lead, no Kremnitz white, no Naples yellow, no chrome yellow. There are other colours that are moderately toxic, so you must use common sense. You will have to decide how far you want to take this. I read somewhere that even burnt umber is a little bit toxic, but it's so minimal that paint manufacturers don't need to write it on the labels. So toxicity, like most things, is a relative thing. And you will have to decide for yourself how far you want to take it. Let's not forget, paint is not intended to be eaten or inhaled. So as long as you behave normally and use the paint as intended, things are relatively okay. So as far as I know, toxic paint pigments are only dangerous if eaten or if they get into the bloodstream via wounds. They cannot get absorbed by the skin by merely having a smear on your finger. So having paint all over your hands is not necessarily unwise. But washing your hands thoroughly before you rub your eye or eat your sandwich is vital. Of course, common sense is all nice and good, but a toddler or a dog has very little of it. So it might well be a good idea to simply ban all paints that are considered toxic. You might be sensible to, enough to wash your hands, but your baby will not be. So stick to titanium white and cadmium alternatives. Alternatives to solvents and other toxic material. Now, what are the alternatives to toxic materials? Let's start with toxic paint colors. Some paints are made from toxic pigments, such as cadmiums, cobalts, or lead. Now, whether a paint colour is toxic is not always stated on the tube, so you might have to do some research for yourself. Do keep in mind that the toxic bit is not always dangerous in the same way. Some pigments are dangerous to touch, as it can be absorbed through cuts and grazes on the skin. For other pigments, it's mostly dangerous if the dust is breathed in. Clearly, a tubed oil paint does not have any dust, so those pigments are relatively safe to use as long as you don't eat the pigment or grind your own paint from the pigment. That said, if you want to sand your painting for effect or you want to paint over it and you want to sand away some brush marks, you will be loosening dust, paint dust. And so you must be careful if you do that a lot. But let's keep our common sense hat on. You won't drop dead the minute you breathe in some toxic paint particles. But if you do this regularly over a long period of time, um, it probably can hurt you. For most toxic paints, there are alternatives out there. Instead of cadmium red, you can buy various different reds. Each brand will name them differently, so it's difficult to give you suggestions. I use Mussini's Brilliant Scarlet, for example, which is close to a cadmium red light. Or Fazari's Permanent Bright Red, which is a little bit stronger. Most brands are aware that we want safe alternatives to the toxic pigments and are manufacturing an excellent range of colours. So look out for warning signs, do your research and choose alternatives. Solvents. How can we replace solvents? Now, oil painting without solvents is not hard to do, but it does require some adjustments. Solvents are easily avoided. Many artists think that having a jar of turps open next to your easel is an absolute must, but nothing is further from the truth. Of all oil painting materials, solvents are the most hazardous to your health as they have fumes that will fill the air in your room. Oil paint pigments do not have fumes, so you cannot breathe it in. But solvents do have toxic fumes and therefore it is recommended to always keep the jar closed. If you want to ban it altogether, as I have done for many years, there are plenty of options. Now solvents are often used for cleaning. 
Most artists use solvents to clean their brushes. So what do you use if you want to avoid solvents? Water and soap, for example, works very well. Dishwashing liquid and water also works well. Or else use painting oil, linseed or walnut oil, to clean out the paint, after which you can wash your brush with water and soap to remove the oil. There are also safe brush cleaning soaps on the market, such as Master's Soap, which is what I use, to clean my brushes while I'm painting. I simply wipe them on some kitchen roll and then clean properly with Master's Soap. Most artists like to use solvents to thin their paint. Perhaps in an underpainting they would like to start with thin washes of paint. One alternative to this is to use water-soluble paint in the underpainting stages. Another option is to use acrylic paint for underpainting because it's absolutely fine to use acrylic paint first and go over it with oils, but don't do it the other way around. It's not a good idea to use oils as a thinning agent in an underpainting as it would make the paint too oily or fat and you might get into trouble with the fat over lean rule. I've got another blog post explaining how that works. Keeping the paint lean and not too oily in the first few layers is always sensible. I simply use paint straight from the tube for my underpaintings. If I want a thin layer of paint, I simply use a sturdy brush and thinly scrub on the paint. I don't need a solvent and I don't have any issues with drying time as the paint is scrubbed on so thinly it is dry in no time and I can paint over it pretty much immediately. If I feel like I need a thinner paint in later layers, I add a non-toxic medium such as a linseed oil to thin the paint, but never use more than 20% or thereabouts to, to mix it in, just to drip, otherwise it will end up too oily. If you need a more fluid paint, you can also consider changing brands. If you like thin paint, like I do, Using a brand that makes fluid paint is a really good start. I find, for example, Old Holland quite thick and pasty, while Fazari and Blocks are more fluid. So if your paint is a bit thick and you feel like you need to thin it a lot, maybe try out some different brands. Now, mediums are, of course, hugely popular for oil painters, and um, most mediums will contain toxic solvents. Most ready-made oil painting mediums have solvent in them. Do look at the ingredients or if they are not listed on the bottle, just ask the manufacturer or the seller what is in it. Many are more than happy to reply. A medium will change the normal behavior of oil paints. So you only need it if you want to paint to do something that it doesn't normally do, like drying quickly or being extremely fluid or very thick. The best advice I can give is to just keep it simple. You might not need a medium at all. I generally don't paint with a medium and I use paint straight from the tube. You can try linseed oil or walnut oil to see if it suits you, but it might slow down drying time. Linseed and walnut oil are not toxic. There are various oils on the market that do various things to your paint, but they all make your paint fatter, so it's important to only use tiny amounts. Now, one thing that remains a problem if you want to work solvent free or safe is varnish. I have yet to find a non-toxic varnish for oil paintings. That said, there is no rule that you have to varnish your work. Some artists do, some artists don't. Varnishing offers the best protection it can give and a varnish will simply add a synthetic layer between the paint and the outside world. If dust or grime gets onto the painting, it lands on the varnish and not the paint. So if it gets a clean or a light dust, it's the varnish you are cleaning, not the paint. I find this a reassuring thought, and so I do varnish. Varnishing happens when the kids are out, when the doors and windows are open. Plenty of artists, however, do not varnish. They don't like the look of it, although there is matte, silk, gloss, all sorts of varieties out there. Or they don't like the idea or adding, of adding a layer to their paint. We are still waiting for a manufacturer to come up with a solvent-free varnish. 
So if you want to paint without using solvents, what are your options? Well, let's list them. For a start, you can replace any toxic pigments with alternative colors. There are plenty of options if you want to replace your lead whites and your cobalts. Yes, the colors will handle slightly differently. All pigments have different characteristics. And the colors are never exactly the same, but you will learn how to use them to their best advantage. So don't expect to find a cadmium replacement that behaves exactly the same as a cadmium. It won't. No pigments are the same, but there are plenty of bright reds out there that can do the job. Use a brush soap. Instead of cleaning your brushes with solvents, wipe your brushes clean on some kitchen toweling or some rags and for the remainder of the paint use soap and water or an artist brush soap works brilliantly an alternative you can as an alternative you can use water soluble oil paint there are various brands that do this and there quite a few are of pretty decent quality i've worked with windsor and newton artisan oils many years ago and i thought they were all right you can clean your brushes, thin your paint and clean your hands with just water. It's super easy, non-toxic and it feels pretty much like normal oils. Now one tip I would really recommend of doing if you want to work solvent free is to learn to use paint straight from the tube. This can be mastered with thin brushing, working a la prima and using palette knives. I work with oil straight from the tube and I do not add a medium or use any solvents. I can recommend following one of my courses or workshops if you want to see how I do that. Another suggestion is to use acrylics or water soluble paint in your underpainting. Many artists like to thin their paint in the underpainting stage. So if you want to do away with solvents, I, and you still want to use a thin paint, a thinned paint in your underpainting stage, consider using acrylics or water soluble oil paints. Now, and lastly, my tip would be is to try out different brands. If your paint is too thick and you really feel like you need to thin it and you need a medium, try a different brand, experiment, experiment a little bit with brands and perhaps you can find one that is much thinner, much more fluid than the one you've been using. So it's up to you. It's up to you how far you want to take this. Oil painting without solvents or toxic pigments is definitely possible. But if you don't want to go this far, then you can use toxic materials and be sensible about it. Some artists wear gloves, some artists are very strict in which pigments they ban. I generally just ban the heavy metals like lead and cadmium. I suppose it all depends on you, your situation, your studio, your children, your health. If you are pregnant or have small children, I believe it's a good idea to follow the guidelines for a safe studio and ban toxic pigments and all solvents. I do not think it is necessary to wear gloves, as most, if not all, toxic pigments cannot be absorbed through the skin. Besides that, I am a fairly tidy painter, and I do not get any or much paint on me or my hands. I usually don't even wear an apron. So if you're particularly messy and always looking very arty, with paint splatters all over you, i.e. you look like a real artist, you might want to be a bit more strict with yourself and about toxic materials. Now, I hope this short guide on oil painting without solvents will help you make the move to oil painting if you haven't already. It is such a fantastic medium to work with. It would be a shame if any of you would avoid working with oils because of its supposed toxicity. Do not stay away from oil painting because you think you have to use solvents and toxic materials. You really don't. Honestly, it's completely doable to work solvent free and more and more paint manufacturers are waking up to our call for more eco materials. Oil painting does not need to come with a health warning and painting without solvent, solvents is definitely the future. 
I hope this was helpful to you, but if you've got any questions, just drop me a line, leave a comment below or leave a comment on the blog. Thanks so much for listening and watching and uh, happy painting. Thank you.